Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about is MTG Finance dead? And you know, MTG Finance is a interesting topic, but before we get to MTG Finance, I'll talk about something that happened uh, that existed prior, and that was MTG sharking. And if you know what sharking is, it's when you take advantage of a person. Uh, the, the way I'll put it as, let's assume Apple stock is $100, Everyone knows $100 and you trade $50 in cash for the Apple stock. But the person who has the Apple stock for whatever reason doesn't understand it's worth $100. So they accept $50. The person who traded the $50 for the Apple stock now has made $50 instantaneously without waiting. MTG Finance therefore is very different from this sharking concept because you need to buy these and hold these cards and hope they go up in price. In the sharking model, the card, you've already gotten all the value. You've gotten the value. Um, yes, the card can go up in price again and something like that, but you've already, you traded, let's say, a $50 for something that's worth 100. So there's the value there. Um, and you might say, oh, store owners do it all the time, but that's, the same, it's the same concept, the same margins, the same um, principle, but in this case, uh, a good store owner will tell, you know, the customer, the person trading in the card, hey, this card's worth $100, but because I need to operate my store, I'm only going to give you 50. And if that person gives the $50 or receive, gives the card for $50, it's because that made a logical decision themselves. Now flip it around into during the sharking segment of the community because sharking was way bigger than MTG finance or speculation at the time because why should you wait and put your money in risk and in limbo when you can get instant profits from sharking. Sharking left uh, for two reasons mainly. The main shark, uh, John, I'm not going to say his last name, the biggest shark and the most aggressive and he wrote for Star City Games. He was an extremely popular writer and extremely popular as a sharking figure. Uh, he left the scene and no one picked up, no one took that mantle anymore. And that was just gone. And then the smartphones. So the smartphones was probably the bigger cause of sharking just not existing anymore. But for the most part, those are the two reasons I attribute to sharking going away. So what happened then you will had MTG Finance, which was let's buy some cards and let's try to mess with the economy a little bit. Let's try to do a buyout. And you had an email list, a very famous email list where uh, if the card was emailed and it was just a simple name of the card and the reason why you should buy it, everyone on that list went ahead and bought 50 copies of it and the card would spike even if the card was bad. And a lot of times I look at those cards and they were super bad. And they were not long-term investments. They are not investments. They weren't long-term speculation to hold. They were, let's pump and dump it. So is MTG Finance dead? Uh, this part of it, I think it kind of is. You can no longer make money from specking a card from a recent set. And as we go more and more, um, even the older sets, so outside the reserve list, so the reserve list is a totally different topic, which I'll handle. Well, I guess I'll handle it right now. People are not gonna play Legacy very soon. People are not gonna play Vintage very soon. Are the amount of people who are gonna play those two formats will only go down. There's less attention, there's less media, there's Wizard of the Coast just refuses to cover it, which annoys me beyond, you know, it really annoys me that that happens, but they refuse to cover it and it is not in their best interest to cover it. So they won't cover Legacy or Vintage. Now, modern cards are subject to reprints whenever, however. So a modern card can be reprinted in a standard set, it can be reprinted in a modern master set, it can be reprinted in a conspiracy set, it can be reprinted in pretty much uh, from the vault, it can be reprinted in uh, just so many different ways to reprint a judge promo. Uh, modern cards as well are not really speckable uh, anymore because there's just too much danger of reprint. And that gets me into standard cards. Have you seen Battle for Zendikar prices? Have you seen Kaladesh prices? I'm assuming this is a month after. Have you seen some of these prices? They, so many packs are being opened 
and so few cards are actually that good that the price tank of something like Jace from 100 to 20, 25 is the future of standard. That's Jace might not, never recover. Maybe he'll get up to $30, but at one time he was $100 in a card. So specking on standard is very dangerous and it's not quite lucrative because packs can always be opened more. So if there's a $100 card, just open more packs and hope you get it. Anyway, that I think MTG Finance is not dead. It just has to change. I'm very excited to see what the next iteration of it will be. Anyway, bye guys.